let's talk about creating social proof. So social proof shows others um, that have used your product, right? Um, and the point is to build trust. So in the digital age, we don't get to meet our sellers. We don't get to meet our vendors. This is not a farmer's market where you can see who's selling you your food. So instead, it's great to include social proof that says, I'm a real person. This is not an internet scam. These real people have taken my course and they liked it. And you obviously want to include positive examples. So there are three ways you can do this on your sales page. Testimonials, press coverage, and data. So let's look at what testimonials are. Here you can see three different people, their images, and quotes from them. These people might be influencers in the space that your audience knows, or they might just be an average person that your audience can connect with. But either way, we have the image, so we know they're a real person. Their name, first and last, is important. Their title is great to show that they're, you know, educated or reliable or an influencer or just anyone, whatever you think your audience would connect with. And then they have a quote. And here, these examples are great because they have testimonials of what these people raised and how long it took them. Another thing is pre press coverage. So we can see here that this course was featured in TED, NPR, Fast Company, Forbes, Harvard Business Review. That is some awesome trust building logos. The thing is though, you don't have to be featured in top tier outlets uh, to include social proof. So I recently hosted a webinar and it was made very clear that, you know, what you really need is a logo from a place where your audience hangs out. So maybe your audience is on a small website, but everyone knows it for a very small speci specific niche, like underwater cave diving monthly. And if that's what your audience is and they're reading that magazine, include it. Those small titles, you know, something like Whiskey Advocate, not a top tier outlet, but if your course is on learning how to taste whiskey, um, that is a very relevant outlet and including that logo can add a lot of authority to your site. The other thing you can include is data. Just last week, 5,791 companies started their own. Those specific numbers, one, by not being around a number, people think they're real, um, but they also just show how many people are using this product. So we always say that we've had over 15,000 course launches at Teachable, and we have, and actually that number is much higher now. Um, but the biggest thing to remember is that the more people that see others that are interested in your course and use your product, the more likely they will convert and also buy your product. So here on The Profitable Teacher, we've included, you know, a number like 5,000. We've included testimonials from Brie Noble and Asad Chandri, and we have their quotes there. Let's look at Mariah Cause. Her page has four testimonials, no press coverage, but they're testimonials from people who matter to her audience. Sarah Morgan, Jenna Sword, Paul Jarvis, these are all online entrepreneurs. And while they might not be known to your best friend that isn't an online entrepreneur, for this space, these people are incredibly relevant and they're thought leaders. And including their testimonial builds trust. So think about that photography example. I'm just gonna try and get one to three uh, testimonials. Remember, quality over quantity, right? You don't want 50 kind of mediocre testimonials. Three good ones, much better and much easier. I want to point out that it is illegal to take testimonials from one product and use them on a new product. So if someone really liked your first course, you can't put that on your second course unless you state that this came from your first course. You just need to be transparent. I understand that some of you might be creating your first course. So maybe you're teaching cake baking and you've been in the industry for 17 years. Get someone who's maybe worked with you and can speak to your background, your professionalism, and how well you know um, this industry. And they can say that in their testimonial and be like, I can't imagine, you know, this person has known the space. They've worked in it for 17 years. I can't imagine anyone with a more in-depth understanding of the way cake decorating has like shaped and formed over the years. Um, I'm excited to work with them as always and I'm currently enrolled in the course. That kind of thing. So reach out to people who have paid for your skills or who have worked with you.
Let's talk about how to write your author bio and FAQs, or frequently asked questions. So your author bio is the only place on your sales page where you should talk about yourself. Everything else should be focused on your audience except for this, and it should prove that you're a trustworthy authority. Notice that I didn't say expert, right? You don't have to be an expert to launch a course, but you should be trustworthy and you should be somewhat of an authority. So you're going to tell people how you know this topic, right? Maybe you're not an expert with 15 years of experience. Most people are not, but you want to say, hey, I learned this um, last year and I launched X product. That's why I'm trustworthy and an authority. So that's an example, but one thing to remember is to convey results around the field and what you've done and how you know it. So here we give Ankur Nagpal our Teachable CEO's bio, and it talks about him being the largest developer in the history of the Facebook platform and includes numbers um, of social proof, 10,000 applications, leveraging his work, reaching upwards of 200 million users, where he's been featured, um, that he headed up Product Live Current Media Cricket.com, helped purchase the digital rights to the Indian Premier League from the Board of Control for Cricket in India, um, what he studied at Berkeley, and just a little bit of background on his professional accomplishments, that he's really a standout person and he knows what he's doing. So Mariah does this as well. She says, your webinar rockstar masterclass maven. <laughs> I love that title, right? It's so focused on her niche. But she says, hi, I'm Mariah. I've been running my own online business for six years, doing everything from an online boutique, selling services and consulting to creating a sold out every time program and product. So a little bio about herself, saying who she is, what she's done, why she's trustworthy. So to recap, build trust, build authority, give your background. As far as FAQs, these are super important for making your life easier down the line. They want to do three things. Answer the logistic questions now, right? How people buy your course. Will they be able to get a refund? When do they get their money back? Um, how you're going to interact with students. Save yourself time on support by asking, I'm sorry, answering all those questions now. And also, make sure to give people a money back guarantee. It's just what we always do and what we really strongly suggest. You know, um, you are an online product. Um, people, it's a new platform. People are more willing to take that leap of faith if they know they can get their money back in 30 days. So here's an example. This is what we used on The Profitable Teacher. Is this course applicable for people who are already teaching online? Why is there an enrollment period? Is there specialized equipment? Does Million Dollar Instructor have a refund policy? Add a humanizing letter to your online course. We think of this as an advanced option. It's a nice to have, not a need to have, so don't let this stop you from putting your course live. So what you can do is write a mini article with a story about your course and include it at the bottom of your sales page. It's basically a mini blog post with a story or letter from you, the founder. What it does is humanize you. It adds a story and human aspect to the online course. It's your chance to be emotional and human and talk about your passion for this topic and why you're teaching it. It really should be more emotional than your course bio and description and just really reach out and convey your passion for what you're teaching. So if you look at Million Dollar Instructor, um, we have this, an online course. Online courses are the future of media. It's a letter from John at Bitfountain. He and his partner made $2 million on their online course. And look at that hook. Everything we knew about education has changed. And if you look at this text, he says, when we first started teaching online, we had no idea it was possible to make this type of impact with teaching. Now when you're in, we realize this isn't a fluke. If John and I could start from ground zero to create the most create and make these courses successful. We think really anyone can. It's basically a humanizing letter. You can see another example here with Matan Griffel's one month course. Uh, here, you might wanna just pause this part of the section and read what he wrote.